Hello, everyone. Hope you're um, receiving me well. Just um, gonna set up the light a bit better. Wait a second. Hopla, nice. Much more better. Um, yeah, welcome to the live Q&A. Uh, this time it's gonna be in English, so probably easier for everyone and um yeah like i think it's going to be uh probably a better idea to to talk about well yeah it's pretty accurate to talk about avalanches and, and stuff like this so we're going to try to direct the questions as much as possible towards that subject considering a, a bit the situation that there is right now in europe it's uh it's pretty phenomenal uh, like the conditions that we've had, I think, uh, yeah, we're quite uh, a few guys. Like we've never seen that before. Uh, so I'm I'm based in the Verbi area in Switzerland, and and it seems to be the same, like quite all around. Like Zermatt is the same. Uh, I, I think there are some huge avalanches also in France. Uh, basically everywhere, like in in all the northern part of the Alps, where it's been like kind of snowing a tiny little bit early season. And then later on, it's just uh, been like super cold for a really long time without snow. So it's just been building a ton of facets. So basically, there is a worse layer than there is normally. Um, like like here in Verbier, it's usually 60 to 70 centimeters of, uh, of facets that are underneath the snowpack. So that makes like a crazy, crazy instability. Uh, but yeah, we can talk about it. I, I cannot see any of your questions. So like if you have any questions, just please send them over uh, and we can start like this and, and follow the flow in that way. Uh, but, uh, I have the feeling it's not. Are you guys seeing me or not? Because... Uh, hmm. Can you guys write a question or something or a comment? Because I don't see any of your questions and that's weird. Normally they all show up. Bini? Hopla. Um, yeah, I don't know. It seems that the chat is disconnected. Uh, yeah. Well, it says not, not connected. 78 people are there. Um, <laughs> should I update the page? Oh, can you? Hello, hello, can you see me? All right, I, I, I don't get any questions, so that's weird. We have a bit of a technical pro problem, so I guess I'm going to be just telling you um well i'm just gonna talk <laughs> sorry it's a bit boring but this it's always the same with those uh, uh like live conferences and stuff there's always a technical problem but um yeah anyway so i was saying that uh right now in burby there are like yeah 60 to 70 centimeters of facets so this is all produced by the fact that it's been like so cold for three four weeks with a really tiny snowpack so there was like maybe 50 60 centimeters of of snow at the very beginning of the season very early uh, and then it's been sunny and cold for a long time so i don't know if you're familiar with the process uh you know like how facets get created it comes from the difference of temperature uh, between the air uh, and the ground so the ground is always uh like somehow warm and especially early season and the air, if it if it's really sunny, a really high pressure, it can be really cold for quite a long time. And uh, if you have a small layer of snow, that will like make kind of in a way a huge gradient because there's a huge difference 
yeah, like with a, with a small, um, well, there's a huge difference of temperature between the ground and the air with a very small dampening from the snow because the layer is small. But if you would have a massive uh, ton of snow, that would be a big dampening. So it would kind of spread out the kind of the, the, the air difference between the outside, like the, the outside air and the ground. And that would, uh, that would make the difference. Yeah, I'm really sorry. We're trying to sort out this, uh, 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 this problem. But right now, yeah, I cannot see your questions. So, so that's a bit frustrating. But uh, yeah, so I'll keep on talking. Uh, so <laughs> basically, yeah, so, so basically the bigger the gradient, the more air is going to go through uh, in between the ground. Oh, yes. OK, I've got uh, my technical team. <laughs> you can hear it. Uh, thank you, guys. So uh, thanks for your patience. So I've got all the questions. and. Um, and that's good fuck shit. I need to catch up because there are a lot of questions. So, tuck, uh, tuck, 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 tuck. All right. Have you guys haven't been, yeah, great condition this season so sad we can come. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty bad. In Switzerland, we've been kind of lucky enough to, to have lifts open. So that has allowed us to go out there and not be like blocked with all this like COVID uh, situation. And uh, yeah, but the last few weeks have been really, really uh, super sketchy. Like, you know, with the whole COVID uh, scenario, plus avalanche is going everywhere, really bad accidents going around. It's been uh, kind of crazy. So there is a question from a uh, team. Uh, what is the best way to identify a wind slab, wind loaded area if you don't know the wind direction history? And how is the snow different, uh, more compact? Yeah, without being hard. It's like it's yeah, it's not like that easy to say. Okay, the snow is going to be like this. It's going to be a snow slab. But already, if you see a change of snow, that's going to give you an idea. Also, the shape of the snow with the shape of you know the accumulation, you can see clearly that there's going to be a bit of a pocket somewhere. So you can kind of anticipate that a little bit. And you can also imagine the way the terrain is shaped underneath. So you're going to imagine also where there's going to be a bit of a, um, a, a bit of a, um, uh, let's say, accumulation. And then after that, you can read a bit the signs, uh, you know, like the way that the wind and, and the snowpack has been laying down. So you can see if it's been snowing in, in a kind of consistent direction, you can see that there's going to be a lot more snow on one side of the ridge than the other. Uh, and, and for sure, if you're just behind the ridge, there's going to be a lot more accumulation than the rest. That's why usually the biggest risk is always on the ridges. Uh, and I, and after that, I find that, yeah, if you have a bit of a wind slab, you're going to feel a bit uh, of a density in the snow and, and you're going to feel a bit. But it depends how thick it is. You know, if it's, um, yeah, it could be... Uh, yeah, it could be connected to a bad layer at the very bottom of the snow, or it could be, uh, it could be just a little pocket, or it could be the whole thing, which is bad. Like right now, at the moment, uh, it's kind of crazy because there is, a, you know, like there is a lot of tension in the in the snowpack, and it really feels like that there are some super trigger points that just make the whole mountain explode, and, and, and it just breaks in places where you're not used to. So, uh, so once again. You know, it's nice to know. Um, yeah, it's if I, you usually have your you know your habits to know. Okay, this is kind of a familiar type of terrain where you you know that this kind of smells a bit like there could be something there. So I think we act a lot like this into the mountains. You know, it's not like really defined, uh, and then you need to uh, to basically update it with really what you see on the moment, and also. Like with a, like some scenarios like this year, where even if like many people have skied before, uh, like all season long, pretty much, and that uh, like on the day, and that all of a sudden everything goes to the ground. Uh, well, yeah. Well, there there is a really really bad layer, so a bit worse than normal. But I have the feeling that every year here in in Europe, like um, uh, there there is a, like a bit of a bad snowpack like this, and every time it kind of solves itself. And this year, it's really taking a long time to solve itself. And right now, it's like so dramatic. Um, so yeah, sorry, I'm getting back to the question. Another question from uh, Tim Hafner. Uh, big responsibility. How how big a responsibility uh, 
uh, do Instagram skiers influencers have? That's a really good question and really up to date because yeah, I've been witnessing a really bad accident lately and that's exactly the first feeling that I had inside of me. It's just like, okay, well, we're just promoting free riding like all the time. We're just influencing people to go out there. And it's just so brutal that I think uh, very little people are ready to take, you know, uh, like the, the, the way can turn back, like w when things go wrong, you, you know, like, like to being able to face it and stuff is just uh, so awful. And uh, yeah, uh, like f first feeling after the accident that I witnessed here in Verbia with a friend of ours was that, uh, yeah, like, like we have a kind of a responsibility for all these accidents. And I think it's very important for us to, uh, to like to prevent and to say how bad it can be, even though it's annoying, you know, we all just want to think of good things, great days of writing and stuff. But I think it's important to, to really push on the fact that things can go really, really bad. And especially at the moment, like to give you an idea, like in Switzerland, uh, the whole of last season, there's been seven, seven fatal accidents. And only like in Verbia here, only in one week, there's been five uh, fatal accidents. So it's just like crazy. And all of them in places where it's like really uh, like, yeah, you not expect that on a normal season and stuff like with the conditions that, that there's been OK, maybe. But uh, it's just uh, it redefines a bit your uh, comprehension of of you know like how avalanche can go and stuff i'm sorry i'm I'm talking a lot i'm zapping a lot of questions so uh, do you discuss with other pre riders from verbia Geraldine and emilia about you post or not uh, about what to post on social media no not enough actually but uh yeah i've been uh following yeah Geraldine. at the beginning i thought she was posting a lot about yeah it's great powder blah, 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 and i thought it would be important that she posted uh, something about avalanches because it was getting really sketchy and, and that's when all the accidents happen and eventually she she posted a, an avalanche fo photo i think it's kind of good especially when it happens to update everyone that the situation is bad because yeah sometimes if like if you don't look social media you don't look press and stuff you can just be out there and not necessarily see what happens and the conditions are bad and you don't realize it necessarily and it's hard to always uh, trust the the, the rating of avalanches okay it gives you a really good idea you know uh two is good but still 30 percent of accident happen on two three is most of accidents and four is like less accidents people because people uh, become careful because it's like supposed to be so sketchy and five you stay at home but still there are so many um like little um a specific case scenarios where where you can't just take that as a rule and be like okay it's it's three today it's fine we can go and do everything and actually the the day that uh, uh our friend passed away here like that was danger it went from four to three and i personally went like oh it's it's uh number three so that's like much safer and plus i saw a lot of tracks everywhere so i was gonna go and do uh some runs where things slid and uh yeah once again uh, i learned my lesson being like um yeah like having to be always super super conservative uh how how important do you rate avalanche backpacks uh for me powder is uh 98 of the time i'll have an uh, avalanche uh, backpack even out of principle you know because you always think in the morning okay i'm not gonna go uh, in avalanche uh, like situation, I'm gonna stay in the woods at the bottom of the resort, and then you meet a friend, and then there is a little bit of a sunshine at the top. So you so you go at the top. This happens all the time, and you're there. You're like, oh, I don't have my avalanche airbag. Ah, but you still go, and um, yeah, things could happen, or you don't go, and you miss an amazing uh, session. Um, we always see you on a regular board on your videos. Do you plan to do extreme snowboarding with swallow guns? Oh yes, yes, Cyril. <laughs> that's uh, that's great because I love swallow guns. I used to ride them a lot when I when I lived in Chamonix back in the days, because uh, they were perfect. They're like on, on the Grand Monte where it's like huge vertical uh, downhills. They were amazing. They're my favorite boards, and it's been kind of on my program to bring one back. You know, similar to the Osin boards back in the days, because. Uh, I think they're, they're just weapons like it's a bit of a sh a bit shorter of a swallow but uh so it, it, it still have has maneuverability but the the swallow take gives you so much speed 
you know, it makes you feel that you ride normal and then you watch a video, you're like, what the hell? Like you ride twice as fast. It's like phenomenal. And you can stomp cliffs like 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 the best. <laughs> That's really good. Um thanks, Carlo. Uh thanks for the nice message. Uh do I do online courses on free ride and avalanche basics? Uh phew. Well, I don't do that personally, and I don't know anyone who does that. I know in a few days we're going to do something uh, in Verbi online with a guide. Um, uh, like there's going to be, I think, a guide, uh, avalanche specialist, uh, maybe a ski patrol or something. So I, I don't know exactly, but it's going to be, I think, on, on Friday evening. Sorry, Friday evening, Euro time. But I'm going to put it on my network. So if you guys want to join in, I think that's going to be great. Um, uh, the Avalanche Bulletin often speaks of t steep terrain, very steep terrain, close to ridges. These words are fa fairly relative. What are, are the con corresponding degrees and meters? I think that's the thing. You cannot uh, take uh, everything to it's no point you know thinking okay it's above 35 degrees it's going to be it's considered as steep uh, you know uh, if it, it so depends on the place on the time on so many things it's just an idea which will influence your choice but which you need to cross with so many other factors you cannot be too specific and actually i think personally my way of approaching I don't say it's the best, but it's, it's been my way. Uh, it's been like not to be too analytic, too scientific about it. Uh, like you need a little bit of that to give you a bit of an influence. And then the rest really comes like I've been trying to be a bit more like like from logic, from my behavior uh, going around it, uh, going into my runs and stuff. And uh, yeah, so I think... It's a bit like choosing a line. I find that you need to really have a bit of a time where you think consciously, okay, these kind of runs are going to be dangerous. Uh, like the steeps need to avoid, like this kind of northern aspect right now is super dangerous. I'm not going to go in there. Okay. Uh, and, and then you really need to like put that in your head and then think with your heart and, and then kind of work on building a way of having a behavior which is going to make you take the right decision with this uh, specific information, you know? So it's not black or white. And that's super important to know because uh, when you think it's black or white, uh, then you might think, okay, now it's white, so it's all good to go. You might lower your guard or, or you're, you think, for example, I'm with a mountain guide and the mountain guide knows everything and he said it's fine, so I'm, I, you go. And, um, you know, in avalanches, it doesn't work that way. Even the best guy ever, tells you it's good to go, something could happen and you need to keep that in your mind. I think that's the biggest, biggest lesson. Yeah. Um, and a question from David, how do you best plan for your runs when you are just two people in a group? Uh, where to stop and such? I think when you're two people, it's, uh, it's uh, to me, it's like kind of the best because you don't have too much information going on. You're really concentrated. And I think it's exactly the rest as when you're a bigger group in terms of where you're going to stop and stuff. Uh, for me, w whenever you ride uh, like avalanche uh, avalanche terrain, whenever you ride off-piste and there is any kind of uh, powder, so any avalanche danger, you need to always kind of think, always i'm gonna ride and stop at the next safe spot and you always need to have it in your head where is that next safe spot and you need to go there even if you don't stop there you need to kind of get close to it and you you see that nothing is going on you have no bad signs so you carry on till your next spot i always say that it's important to go uh with a mindset where you go from point a to point b those two points being your safe spots like your islands of safety uh, to me that's really a, a rule that I use all the time, even if it's like concrete, whatever. Uh, because, yeah, I was talking about behavior. I think building behavior is so important, I find, that uh, if you do it on a daily basis, the day that's going to be important and there's going to be a lot of stress and stuff, you're going to do it without thinking, and that could avoid a lot of uh, mistakes. Um, tuck, tuck, tuck. Uh, th th uh, yeah. Thanks, uh, Doc L8. Uh, tuck, 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 tuck. 
uh, best AV backpack for snowboarding. For I use uh, ABS. I really, I really like the, the the light classical ABS because uh, I think it's it's just a system that I've used for such a long time that works well. The weight is amazing. It, it's pretty compact, but there are some like many other brands that do great gear. Uh, I know I've never tried the like all the systems with the fans and stuff, and I'm sure they were great. A lot of people swear by them as well, but uh, I think. Yeah, I, I, I would not think, okay, one is better than the other. So I'll let you uh, research and find what you like for your own style and, and the kind of uh, run that you like. I, I know I personally always like to go around 30 liters because I think that's a good, uh, good volume that you can easily compact. Uh, if you have nothing, if you really go for a really quick ride, or you can still put quite a bit of uh, gear, like your rope, your, your harness, uh, like a bigger jacket, and etc so i think that's like kind of my my size i would go for yeah and, and then the weight is super important and the more compact it is uh closer to your body the better um question five how do you access the avalanche assess the avalanche risk in switzerland right now above the zero degree limit higher than two oh ah, yeah so like with a zero degree limit being higher than 2200 meters so right now well or this afternoon it was snowing uh, almost at 3000 meters uh, up in verbia here uh so in a way it's kind of you know so it's bringing a lot of moisture into the snow which in a way is good because it's gonna let uh whatever needs to slide slide uh it could be bad if it's not enough in a way and if it snows straight away after the the rain because then that's that kind of all that water is going to stay in there it's not going to evaporate uh and, and like it's not going to allow kind of the snowpack to freeze and kind of create some kind of a a shell but uh i think that right now the situations are so bad that having some rain uh all the way up high is uh, i think the best thing we could get like it would be either that or getting so much snow and then not touching it for a while uh, and then let things slide so i think like for sure when it's like this you don't want to be in the runs because uh you know the runs are getting loaded loaded and they're already super unsafe uh, and there's a lot of things that still need to go down so right now unfortunately uh I'm close to considering uh, for advising people to just go on slopes, really, because it's it's that bad, really. It's like going in places that are just mental. Or if not, you need to stay really at a low elevation, with um, uh, like without being in steep terrain, uh, and like this, the risk is a lot, uh, a lot more acceptable and a lot better. Yeah. Um, so like if you identify a very weak spot a very layer at the start of the season uh tuck, 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 and you come back to this spot later on you know very bad layer like sometimes well very often if it snows enough or if it rains or if there is a crazy heat uh wave or something you know or if it's skied at the right time uh they could heal quite well uh they could become dangerous later on in the season when it gets really warm like in the in the late spring but uh usually eventually they do heal so i think you know, like it's not like okay you have a bad layer i'm not gonna ski anything because uh like if it was like this you would like pretty much never ski things like apart for places where they have so much snow and where they don't really have those those bad uh, bad layers at the beginning of the season because when it starts snowing you know like japan alaska canada places like this where, where it just pounds meters and meters straight away and it doesn't have time to create any bad uh, bad layers um but uh yeah that that, that gives you a, a bit of an idea so so it's always you need to always kind of uh get the info like try to understand but go out there and like read the time and give the time to uh all the signs to come to you in a way like if you go out there and you expect straight away to uh like to like to have the best run and whatever and especially like in the case of uh, the the first good weather day after uh, after a big storm like this is kind of my like what i hate the most when when you can feel this like everyone being so excited and and like so so like stressed to go uh, uh, like be gnarly into some lines like uh, I, I really try to avoid as much as i can this situation because this is exactly what you shouldn't 
do in the mountain and with the snow it's really important to give it time to settle to give uh, the mountain time to give you the signs so the signs can come from you know what you've read from the avalanche um, uh, forecast so the the rating of the avalanche level uh, it could be from talking to ski patrols it could be from just watching what has been sliding on its own it could be from watching what tracks uh, have been going on and letting them go maybe it could be letting the first day of sunshine you know bring some heat and see if things go more easily you know it's like a, a lot of different things uh, which give you information and which slowly will give you more and more confidence yeah uh why aren't why aren't heavy backpacks uh, with breathing devices not promoted more like alvinate uh, or rigging uh, aval avalung to a backpack seems like a very important piece of safety equipment yeah i used to ride uh, all the time with, uh, with an avalung back in the days and yeah i remember that, that feeling as soon as you get into a run you know that there's some risk you put the, the avalung in in your in your mouth so the avalung for those who don't know it's like a little thing which will filter your air uh, it's a little breathing thing which you have in your mouth in case you're into an avalanche. Uh, but it, it's quite a controversial product. Like some people like it and some people don't. And and it feels from everything that I've seen and heard, it's kind of difficult to keep it in your mouth if you're really in a in a real big avalanche, and and, and that's when you're gonna need it the most. So so I say that it's something which could uh, help you in some specific cases, but it's definitely not the tool which which will be uh the bomb but yeah it's true that when you think about it you could the more uh, chances you give yourself the better but uh yeah you you cannot have everything at the same time so i think that's a personal choice i definitely would recommend it if you have the patience of having it and, and wearing it and and like if you're training usually to put it in, into your mouth uh and keeping it and stuff because it because like that 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 you know work with your gear is super important always like it's like with your airbag to regularly you know like train yourself to put the the hand on the handle you know where and like know how it feels know where it is that's going to be so important because so many accidents happen where people haven't been able to pull because they couldn't find their um their handle so keep that in mind uh is it a bad idea to try to unclip your binding if you're in an avalanche to avoid the anchor effect? Um, no, it's not a bad idea, but it's just impossible. <laughs> no, it's like uh, you don't realize the, the traction that there is. Uh, I don't know if you've been ever surfing, but if you surf on a very, very big day and you're getting uh, smashed completely by a wave, uh, it's a bit like this, but even worse. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, even on a small slide, you know, there there, there are so many forces uh, that, yeah, like, uh, don't even think about uh, being able to do that. And especially because if you would manage, for example, to take one binding off, it's not sure that you would take the other one off. And then uh, good luck to your knees, like, if you know what I mean. Um, Basil is asking uh, if the reservoir whistle is dead or not. Uh, we're still... <laughs> Uh, on a working mode like to me it's such an important part of the kit you know it's like this emergency device that i've been working on for a while and uh, i put on pause the fact of promoting it because we haven't had enough clearance on all the safety uh, countries and everything around the world so it's like quite a, a bit of a brain um, uh, like it's quite tough to get it through but um, yeah i'm still working on it and i'm still really strongly believing in it so i hope i'm going to be able to uh, to get it out there soon um so i guess you if you're already uh sliding the avalanche probably not but is it just is, if you just get caught by it you must be really reactive really yeah well i could work on a small avalanche maybe but uh yeah i think i believe way more into trying to escape an avalanche rather than try to take off your bindings and then once again also uh you know i've seen that before on an accident i have in mind i'm not gonna give you detail but uh where the person instead of es trying to escape sat down and pulled the avalanche uh, pulled the airbag and got dragged into cliffs uh you know it was like kind of a panic um a reflex where where that person stopped and pulled the airbag uh like instead of just concentrating on going to the safe spot so 
remember safe spot safe spot safe spot like that's really the the one thing you need to stick on um 24 uh but blah, 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 blah. sorry <laughs> i'm trying to uh how do i explain explain to my wife that i spent so much money on something called free ride <laughs> very good one mojmo yeah yeah it's true that it's uh it's an expensive sport yeah yeah uh, you need uh, quite a bit of equipment and especially if there are rocks and you're gonna smash your board but yeah 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 what can i say yeah i'm, I'm on the, the good side of the thing but yeah i guess that it's always been in the back of my head to try to create a board that's indestructible that you can write rocks with and that you could keep forever and um yeah with russell with my new xv we're gonna be trying to um to make it not like a board which changes every year, you know, where especially the graphic changes every year, but we're really gonna try to make it like um, like a board that you can keep forever, that like that is really strong, that is like a really classic shape, and that is going to be there uh, for a long time. So it's, you know, like to try to stop to think that you need every year to have the new board, the new board, the new board, the new gear. Yeah, I think I kind of like the fact of reusing products and giving them uh, like a long life and yeah i'm a big fan of the duct tape everywhere and, and uh all the products that i've lost all their colors <laughs> um do you like step on bindings yeah i love step on bindings but uh unfortunately i think uh to me a step on binding the step on binding of of my dreams would be a step on binding which would be really compatible with a with a touring system so so I think this is this has to come. And, and like uh, I saw a question before about hard boot split boarding. You know, it's a big topic at the moment. A lot of people, like more and more people are getting into it. And there's definitely something that has to come, which will be a step on uh, with the rigidity of a hard boot, which will allow, allow you to give you uh, some really good grip on the traverses with your split board. Uh, and, and also that freedom of the step, step on, uh, and hopefully keeping all that comfort from the snowboard boot because uh, I think we are all snowboarders. We are all so proud of the comfort you can have in your snowboard boots. And um, yeah, and voila. But yeah, um, I'm working on something. And uh, yeah, same. Like it's just uh, not so easy because there is so many technologies, different technologies that you need to put together. Uh, it requires quite a bit of uh, time and investment from companies. So like, we're trying to make this happen. Yeah. Um, is there any specific time that you must open your airbag once you got caught in the avalanche and when doesn't uh, worth to open it? That's a very good question. Uh, but the, the sooner, the better. Like basically it's as simple as this. Whenever like you see cracks around you, you pull because uh, it's easy to be too late. As soon as you start uh, to make one tumble, it's going to be so hard to being able to catch your, uh, uh, your handle. So remember that like train to 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 grab it and as soon as you see anything go don't think okay you're gonna waste your 20 bucks uh, for a refill of your cartridge doesn't matter you pull um tac 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 da, 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 da. Uh, prevention is always better than reaction um yeah well it, it, it's true yeah but unfortunately, it's uh, it's better, but it's a combination of things. You need prevention and you need reaction. And uh, yeah, it's good to yeah, to be smart and always think that the mountain is going to be there uh, next year, whatever. And, and even if you only have one week holiday and it's good conditions, it's, it's really good to not be too excited. Um, yeah, so Miss Abo, the more gear, uh, you wear the more you feel invis inv invincible and maybe not so good feel more alive to feel mortal to be careful and, and enjoy i think yeah that's uh that's a fair point it's true that um uh, i think it's uh, a bit of a controversy right now you know everyone having airbags a transceiver shovel probe uh, the whole lot everything helmet and thinking okay i've got all this so i'm fine and a lot of people don't realize that this is a, a just a small part uh, of the invincibility but uh, there is <laughs> it's it's only what you can get so it, it helps you but it's not definite uh, and the problem of feeling that invincibility is that it will make you take bad decisions that's true um so i would not advise that <laughs> to uh 
you know, to anyone to be like, okay, don't take your avalanche airbag because you're going to feel more invincible. Uh, I totally understand uh, the point of view and it's, uh, it's very true. Uh, but um, yeah, no, I think uh, the more chances you can put on your side, the better. But uh, having the Avi gear means knowing how to use it and training regularly with it. Every season you need to do, uh, at the very beginning of the season, before you ride your first line, you need to have done one transceiver uh, search at least and then do them regularly, do some courses regularly and always try to learn 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 and you will see that the more you learn the more you realize you know nothing yeah uh, <laughs> no but uh but the more you realize you know nothing <laughs> yeah that's the <laughs> i i finished my sentence the more you realize you know nothing the more uh, you're gonna take the right decisions because you're gonna ride uh like thinking that it can go yeah like i, I was saying not too long ago uh that yeah the best lesson i got was uh i got like a big, big um, uh, kind of a, a seminar from this super avalanche guy. So it's a guy from the, the French avalanche, uh, like scientific association. They've been like the Anena and they've been like, he's been researching avalanches his whole life, basically. And he told us like everything about layers, snowpacks, flakes, blah, blah, the whole thing. Like, and then at the end of the, the speech, like the, the two hour session, he told us, you know what? You can just forget everything I told you and uh and like there's one rule that i keep and that's the the one you need to remember is to always ride thinking it's going to slide and uh i remember i was 20 at the time and i remember you know like feeling so weird hearing those words from his mouth uh you know because uh yeah he's a scientific who learns who studies and, and stuff and, and, and like that that kind of uh that that kind of sentence that he put out there was not you know like um like a, a very scientific sentence in a way it was made something that kind of meant that you can't control uh like the elements and, and i think that was uh, the best explanation for it so i think yeah please if if that speaks to you please try to remember that rule because i think to me that's the one the one rule that has helped me the most yeah um as German, as Jeremy Jones said, there are no experts. Indeed, yeah, yeah, it's true. And uh, yeah, I've seen it so many times in my life. Like really, really good guides. Uh, you're on a shoot or on a comp or something, and and, uh, and you have a little doubt on the conditions. Uh, you ask them, "Are you sure it's safe?" Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Uh, no problem. And then the whole face goes down like half an hour later. It has happened to me three times that I can remember vividly and uh like so so that's to 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 really tell you that okay it's good to have a guide it's good to have the info but it's not everything yeah sorry i'm repeating myself but it's important yeah um uh xavier how often should we do rescue training with a transceiver shovel thanks for your tips Laura. uh thanks sergi um well i think you should do at least once a season that's the bare 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 minimum and uh yeah if you don't feel secure you you like if you do more that would be really good like it depends how much time you have and uh and like what kind of facilities you have uh in verbia here there is a transceiver part so that's super handy like on the day when the conditions are not so great especially early season you just go and do that with a with a few friends you know it's kind of fun in a way and, and it puts everything a bit back in place and it's so important and honestly, for having been uh, lately uh, in this accident, I can tell you how the brain does not work. It's just crazy. Like when something bad happens, it's just uh, the other day when I was out there, apparently, like, so my friends told me that, like, oh, you reacted really well. You did what was necessary. And I felt like such an idiot. Like I was trying to take decisions. I was trying to think. Uh, I was trying to, like, you know, to, like, well, I was just thinking, like, man, like, you're just giving lessons to everyone all the time. You're making videos about all this. And, like, I was not able to make sense of anything, what I was doing or or telling people. So, yeah, remember that, like, that, uh, yeah, the more you practice, it's not going to go to waste because, uh, like, probably only a quarter of it is going to be there uh, the day you need it. Yeah. Uh, did becoming a father change your approach in, in backcountry? Uh, a little bit, I would say, for sure. Uh, yeah, it's like, like whenever you feel 
that you're taking risk like for sure for personally like the first image that comes to my mind is uh, my daughters so now i have two daughters and uh i still have been able to do great stuff like so my older daughter is 15 years so I st I've, I've still made most of my career uh like through uh like being a father and honestly uh yeah it's been a, a big way a big responsibility but at the same time you know one that doesn't make you gamble too much and, and like in free riding i think you need to have good reasons not to gamble you know it's a uh, uh and like being a father is one of them but like also once again we all react differently but uh yeah 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 it's um uh, yeah you don't want to leave your kids uh how could you share feedback on this interesting experience with the first track labs do you plan uh something else with them that was really cool to uh yeah i've been uh like so that was uh, our last how-to video where I got to like make my home boards uh, with Fast Track Labs guys in um, in Le Chab, so below Verbia. It's so cool because they have machines where you can prototype everything, and it's the first time that I did this really, and it was great because we got to do um, like the the prototype of the next version of the the XV with all the changes that I wanted to do, and it was so nice to yeah really choose all the materials, really discuss, really like like check all the like the angles of the fiber and stuff and uh yeah it's it, it's so cool to being able to do that i had shaped my own surfboards before and uh yeah i didn't think it was that accessible for uh for snowboarding or skis uh but it is actually it's like uh yeah a few days work and it's um yeah really a labor of love yeah and um question how about free world tour oh free world tour <laughs> No, for World Tour, I've had many, many years on it, and I really loved it. I competed 15 years uh, on the Verbi Extreme, and uh, I think I've done my <laughs> my share of uh, of competition. I think I've scared myself really a lot in 2015. I think I, I've really uh, I've caught a rock on top of a big cliff at the very, very top of the run on the back there. Also, I was like, like on the edge of the the cliff ready to just tumble all the way down and that has kind of cut a lot of the the pleasure of competition and um yeah i must say that it's nice to leave the space to the to the youngsters and let them you know like push the sport and i think when you do competitions you really need to have so much motivation and you really want to to want it so bad because very often you write conditions that are pretty sketchy and uh after a while it's just really hard mentally to to have it you know in there in you and at some point i definitely didn't have it anymore yeah um yeah uh, <laughs> uh basil is uh asking me to to show the board i'll, I'll show it later <laughs> um ta -ta. What are the favorite mellow free ride spots in Europe <laughs> for normal humans? I think there, there are no, uh, <laughs> it's no normal or abnormal uh, spots uh, for, human, <laughs> for humans. So, no, no, it, it just, uh, I would not recommend a one or, or the other spot. It really depends on the year. Uh, and I think that quite often, uh, I think it's really cool to go in little unknown ski resorts. I think that's uh, like the family ski resorts even if it's less dramatic, less cool, you know, it's going to be less impressive on your Instagram or whatever, who cares? Like you might have a lot less people um, like tracking and, and like, uh, and I think that's something that's like, that's um, quite nice to experience. Uh, what's your favorite spot in the world outside of Verbier, of course? Uh, <laughs> well, it depends for what, like, uh, yeah, I think Verbier is like, yeah, I've got it like, I find it's so perfect for a really playful everyday free ride like where you've got every aspect like bigger smaller runs like you can find everything really easily uh without making it a big mission i love all the chamonix area for all the very uh like mountaineering style uh, kind of runs i think alaska is unbeatable uh like with all that snow it's just uh mental but uh it's a very specific riding and and i'm not such a big fan of uh taking a heli for a week and and just uh, smashing fuel uh, all along um and then the best adventure uh, i've had and I've, I've gotten to witness uh has been antarctica i think it's been my best uh, exotic trip ever uh, and i think it will never be beaten 
Uh, GM Rossi is asking, what do you think of Natural Selection Tour? I think it's pretty cool. It's a uh, very freestyle orientated. Uh, my brother is there right now, actually, and they're supposed to compete any day soon. And um, yeah, I think this um, this is. I, I'm really excited to see what they where, where they what they're going to come up with. I think that's going to be uh, really nice. Uh, I think if I would give you my like entire what I would love 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 to see would be the natural selection. Uh, so which means like kind of those kickers, but into a real face. So I think that to me would become the ultimate. So, um, so yeah, maybe it will come because I think uh, uh, Travis has got some uh, great ideas and he puts them in place. So, so let's see. Uh, tac, tac, tac. What would you advise to somebody wanting to start exploring unknown areas more? Uh, whew, I would say, first of all, uh, never go on your own uh, and never go if you're really not sure of yourself uh, like you need to look all the time up and as soon as you see that you're into a ball or anything where you don't know uh, like I think really consider seriously turning back I think you might want to read itineraries uh, like or read topos which we give, which will give you information about you know like all the dangers to be taking care of and, and like what conditions you should be going into and um yeah i think try to go with someone experienced try to make sure that you're gonna have a means of com communication when you go there if anything happens uh try to keep distance all the time when you're out there because uh yeah if you're on your own or like if the two of you are in the avalanche um, then forget it so yeah it's just uh take basically super extra caution i think that's uh, basically the rule the further you go, the more uh, easy you go. But honestly, you go step by step, you take longer, and eventually you're going to be able to do great stuff. But uh, uh, I think the rule number one is not to rush into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you can find the Antarctic Adventure, I think, on YouTube, Mission Antarctic. I think it's a really cool. Yeah, it's a cool film. It's like you will see the, the last run is like the steepest run i've ever ridden because you know it's like basically on the sea you're on the ocean and it sticks so much to the steeps that it was like mental mental i think it must have been like 65 degrees or something like like crazy something which is not possible with a like kind of a, a more continental snowpack because uh the snow doesn't hold in in such uh such steep places uh tac 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 uh yes i talked about the reservoir whistle <laughs> uh, luca you just came in yeah it's a work in progress i think it's a uh, yeah important uh, part of the tool like now uh, we put it on hold because it's like there are some limitations with uh, uh all the services uh, safety services to adopt it and stuff but it's not something we've given up on yet so um, um it's super important for me so um, yeah hope soon i'll be able to give you better answers than that uh, Leo, question, uh, is it worth uh, to have two ice axes? Uh, I got one. I'm thinking about getting a second one for uh, just for approach. I'm not a real alp alpinist. I think uh, if you stay on snow, um, like when I mean snow, I mean really as, as, as long as you don't go on, on a high alpine areas where you have real uh, like you know glacier ice so for example you're going to be in the north face when it's wind scraped and where it's, where it's going to be really little snow and ice i think you can really get away with one ice axe and you're going to be uh, doing amazing things but as soon as you get into the high alpine uh, two is a uh, hundred percent the way to go and, and uh, yeah it will make you feel so much safer so yeah just um uh, keep that in mind yeah um question from uh Tiny Tahiti. I'm originally from French Polynesia. Snowboard is a kid's dream for me, and I moved to Chateau last year to work there and learn the snowboard. Oh, cool. I thought it was a question. Well, great. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'd love to come and live in Tahiti, man. <laughs> uh, the new XV split board next year identical to, to the last year. Yeah, it's going like this year, it's only the graphic which changed. And then uh, from uh, like the next one on, it's going to be a full, fully different uh, version. So stay tuned because it's be coming. It's going to be great. I'm really excited, actually. Um, if I get on an avalanche, it's better uh, to swim or cover your head for creating 
uh, air when uh, when burning. Yeah, it's a good question. I think it's uh, it's great to swim uh, when when the avalanche is moving, and you will feel that after a while it's going to start to slow down, and that's the moment where you're going to have to swim, and just before it stops, uh, like uh, get the hands closer to your uh, to your mouth to try to get a, a bit of a pocket. And, and like as soon as it stops, like try to push the snow. Uh, once again, I speak just out of theory because this never happened to me. But um, yeah, this is what everyone says. And apparently, it's just impossible to move as soon as it stops. Uh, it's just all of a sudden transforms into real concrete. You cannot move one inch. So um, yeah, it's nice to have this once again uh, in your head and visualize it, visualize it so that when like something happen if something happens one day you're gonna you're going to be able to um uh, yeah to have that reflex come and you, you you you're gonna know what to do automatically this is super important uh question from seb how about white frontier do you brew from time to time yeah i did a brew last year actually and and it was like my only brew because i'm terrible compared to uh to chris our master brewer and uh oh shit and uh, no, no, yeah, I, um, I I drink the beer mostly. Like that's what I'm 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 there for. Tuck tuck tuck, tuck tuck tuck. Can you help me with some splitboarding touring app for Swiss? Thank you, uh, and you're the greatest. Oh, thanks, Gabriel. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't know any good app for uh, splitboard touring. Honestly, uh, what I do usually is I take. Uh, uh, I take kind of guidebooks from local areas where I go, and that gives you usually a really good idea of the runs, and, and that's kind of the way I work. Uh, but honestly, I'm pretty bad at uh, like I, I'm not really on my computer trying to to look for that stuff. I know that Fat Map has got uh, uh, itineraries that are proposed more and more onto uh, all the destinations. So everywhere you're gonna go, you click on on ski touring, and then it's gonna give you. Um, like kind of itineraries with uh, with all the the description of them. Uh, it's not you won't have all the runs, but it gives like a fair amount already, and it will get better. But um, yeah, I'm not able to give you a a better app. I'm sorry. Um, like come to visit Abkhazia. Yeah, I, I've been close to Abkhazia, uh, and uh, and yeah, like I know that this is definitely the place with great snow and uh it's it's i call it the european alaska in a way so yeah one day when we are able to travel again maybe <laughs> uh, what is your favorite snack to take into the mountain i find i find baguettes hard to eat when it's too cold uh for me it's dried meat uh, like saucisson like and the one from the pyrenees where i come from so <laughs> this is my uh peche mignon i know it's not super good for you but um you know, such a reward, and I think uh, it's so nice when you get at the top of the mountains to have the reward. Like for me, that's something that's super important. <laughs> uh, tuck, tuck, tuck. Oh la la! Um, like someone is asking me about backcountry camp. Is it still up to date? Ah, God, <laughs> I know I have to do this at some point. I know it will come, but I haven't set it up. Like, yeah, I still have been a bit busy lately. And right now, actually, uh, I just got a tiny surgery on my knee, so I'm blocked for a few weeks uh, until beginning of March. So, so it's, uh, yeah, this, this season between all the COVID and everything is definitely not a good idea. But for next season, I should think uh, of it, like, in a serious way. So I'll let you know, and I'll definitely put it up. Mm. What, what do you prefer, steep neck technical line or line with champagne powder? Uh, I prefer a steep technical line. Yeah, I'm, I'm always actually uh, much more intimidated in a mellow champagne powder line because, uh, yeah, I have the feeling that if anything happens, you cannot go everywhere and you're going to get the whole mountain on your, your face. And on a steep line, I love that you can really read and find some hiding spots everywhere. And I think I feel a lot more um, thrilled uh, by it. And also, yeah, I find that I, I, my mind goes a lot more into uh, uh, yeah, into craziness when I when I get in this kind of terrain. So I'm definitely a steep technical line kind of guy. Um, 
so soon <laughs> no spoon shape board on the xv uh no for now we don't have a, a spoon uh, shape uh, on the xv on the on the split xv there's a tiny bit of a spoon effect but yeah it's definitely something that i used to ride back in the days and uh yeah that uh, i i should definitely think of it so thanks for reminding me actually uh tac 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 any more question tac tac so tac 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 Michael is asking for being 200 pounds, 11.5 boot, boot, which uh, size XV do you recommend? I think it depends on your style of riding. So definitely a white board. So I'd go uh, the white 64 or, uh, or 67. Uh, but even maybe if you like, like kind of speed and if you like having a big board, you could go even up to 174. I think that's a really great board. So um, I think it depends on your style. If you like small and playful or if you like speed and, and you like to being able to stomp things i think then uh, go for a bigger board i think very often snowboarders take two small boards uh, i think i'm i'm really um uh, i really encourage you to try bigger boards and uh, at first it will be like oh it's a bit heavy it's a bit better but you're gonna see how you ride and the confidence it gives you after a while it's like pretty powerful and um yeah i remember sitting uh, at the bottom of a contest with jones a few years ago and we were both kind of really saying like witnessing how much you could see the size of the board and also the mood of the person when they were riding it and, and like when people had bigger board you could see that the turns were like so much bigger and so much more fluid and it's not something you necessarily feel when you ride but uh like when you see yourself in footage it's like so um so obvious it's it's really nuts uh tuck, tuck, tuck. Why is more dangerous the degree between 35, 45 than way over it? Yeah, avalanche risk related. Um, it's not more dangerous. It's like uh, basically avalanches when they happen between 35, 45 degrees. Uh, the problem is that because it's less steep, uh, there's going to be more accumulation of snow because it won't have been cleaning itself regularly. So in steeps, you know, like whenever there is a, a bad layer, whenever, whenever there is a bit of weight on it, it just slides automatically. Or you see it in Alaska when it gets warm or in like really spring, more springy conditions when the snow starts to, um, to be more wet and more sticky. When it snows, you know, like some of it sticks and the rest funnels. So, you know, it kind of washes all the bad layers uh, regularly, uh, like the steeper it is. So, um, so I think that, that makes it a lot steeper because well, a lot more controllable in a way because when something slides, usually it's not going to be, uh, there's not going to be as much as a pro propagation as there could be on a flatter terrain. So that's kind of the, the basic rule. But the counterpart of this is that in a steeper line, uh, when a pocket goes, it could take you into some uh, exposure. So I think that's something to keep in mind and to, to weigh depending on the situation. Yeah. But uh, this is uh, like one of the reasons why I feel really unsafe in big, wide open fields because, uh, yeah, you don't control anything really. Yeah. And in the steep, okay, you have some added dangers, but you still control, I find. Yeah. Not all the time. It depends on the run and it depends on the conditions. But very often you have great ways to to find your way around, around to find a solution in a way. And it's kind of nice to to think in that way. Yeah um what's the average gradient uh, you need for a good power run just went for big, big fresh power but low gradient slope pretty boring yeah i think it depends on on the snow if you have a lot of powder if it's sticky powder or if it's powder that glides well uh, it will make a really different uh sensation also you, you will see some snow that are loaded a bit with humidity uh they will kind of carry you really well um so you don't need much angle, especially if it glides, because you're going to pop, you're not going to sink. And then uh, with more continental champagne powders, you're going to sink to the bottom. So you're going to need quite a lot of angle to being able to carry enough speed. So it actually depends. But uh, for me, the steeper, uh, the more fun it is to ride in a way uh, with power, like, like a good 45 degrees is like really good. You can really let go. You really... Yeah, you can really accelerate super easily. You can really carry speed, and and uh, I think yeah, maybe that could be a uh, like like the good angle for it. Yeah. Um, 
Can you do videos where you watch uh, amateur snowboarders and comment on their body position, technical mistake, and stuff like this? Yeah, I've never thought of, the, of it, but we're going to start shooting the next season of How To soon. So I think uh, that's a great feedback. I'm going uh, to um, like keep it in mind. And someone was suggesting me as well to do uh, one uh, about, um, uh, how do you say, about... Um, uh, digging a snow pit so that's not something we do too much in europe it's a very north american technique but i think it's very interesting because it's once again uh like an added information to help you understand what you're going to be writing uh so i think that's something that i'm going to work on and if you have any more um, like suggestions on subjects that you'd like me to to treat for the next season uh please um like send them over because i think uh the, yeah that's uh valuable information uh tick 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 uh, after all those years well uh, no uh, gm ross is asking if i think pierre avoir is a good spot it, it's a climbing uh uh basically rock just above uh verbier and like there, there yeah it's it's a nice spot but you need to be careful a, a bit there because uh it's quite exposed to some winds and you have a really nice couloir that goes all the way down to uh to saxon eh? and that's a very uh it, it's on my list actually I'm actually planning to do it, and because you might not have snow at the bottom, maybe fly out uh, all the way to Martini and then take the train back. That's uh, that's in my uh, in my list. <laughs> um, after all the years of riding, do you still shout out of joy at the end of a good power run? Uh, yeah, I think if I if I'm with good people, I think this is uh, really what I appreciate the most. Uh, like it's really uh, sharing a good moment with some good friends. I think this is a uh, when really I get the, the the big big pleasure, and now I'm gonna be even more excited because I'm gonna have a, a new knee, so it's gonna be even better. Because like since uh yeah since the beginning of the season I've been struggling a bit. I've had that pain in my uh in my how do you say in my uh well outside my knee because it's been rubbing a bit. So they just scraped a little bit. So it's a six week off, and I'm gonna be back charging, and I'm super excited because yeah when you have a little bit of pain it takes away. A lot of the pleasure and this beginning of, of the season has been a bit like that for me. Yeah. Um, any book recommendation? Yeah, there is a really good uh, book. It's called uh, Free Ride or, or Free Riding, uh, one or the other from Jimmy Oden. Uh, so, um, yeah, keep it in mind because I think it really goes through all the different topics and safety, avalanche, uh, like everything, everything. And uh, yeah, you find so much really good information. So I think that's, uh, to me, the best book I, I feel. Uh, did you ever write Stein Glacier in Engelberg? Tuck, 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 tuck. I don't know if I did. <laughs> uh, I went to Engelberg a few years, a few years ago uh, for a few days, and I really enjoyed it. But I don't remember what we wrote. I'm really bad with names. <laughs> And besides yoga, do you have specific workouts or just going out and running is your only workout? Uh, no, well, I think for me, the the one workout I would advise, because I hate workout, actually. <laughs> uh, so yoga is my number one. Number two would be doing abs, because I think if you have a good core, uh, it's really something where you're going to feel so much difference. And, and then the rest of the workout, I'll, I'll do it, you know, just go out there, just go running in the mountains, uh, you know, run down some hills, uh, just go and do like all sorts of different sports. I think that's my way of doing it, but I have the luxury of having the time to being able to do that. But you, if you have less time, if you're only going to have um, a few weeks to uh, like to ride a year and the rest of the time you're working, then you need to be more specific and really train uh, like your legs and everything because Otherwise, you're going to come snowboarding and you're going to destroy your your uh, your joints and everything. It's important to know whenever you start snowboarding at the the beginning of the season that in all your joints the muscles are not really uh, in shape yet. So your articulations are not held yet, like are not really held by the muscles. So that's when um, basically uh, you you're going to hurt yourself quite a lot. So it's good to give it a good two three days until you feel your muscles. Are getting built uh, around your your knees and, and all your articulations, and then after that uh, go uh, go bigger. So just take it easy on the first few days, even if you're trained, even if you have a uh, oh shit, oh, like I don't have any more. Oh, I pressed the wrong button, and now 
yeah now i don't have the questions anymore so yeah i guess um oh no I've got, uh, they're back you guys are back uh, like let's do two three other questions uh do you use a gps device when touring for example uh loading uh, loading a G gpx file uh, of a planned route on your device uh i don't uh, really actually um uh, I use Swatch. <laughs> no, and Swatch don't have a GPS, so I don't have a GPS watch. I use uh, I use my phone actually. I use uh, the Fat Track app. I think uh, this is what I use for uh, like basically you turn it on at the beginning of the day. It's not Fat Map, so it's part of Fat Map, but it's a different app, so that way it doesn't suck all your batteries. And you're gonna enter. Uh, you're gonna start it at the beginning of your day, and it's just gonna map everything, give you all the specs, and then it will give you a 3D flyby of all your 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 day and everything. And I think that's and every photo you're gonna take throughout your day, they're gonna pop out whenever you see uh, at the end of the day. So that's kind of cool to uh, to use and to share. But yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm. Uh, I don't spend too much time with these things because uh, yeah. Yeah, I try to be more out there <laughs> than on my computer, and I spend already way too much time uh, playing with electronic stuff, cameras, drones, and everything. All I want is to have uh, nothing and just enjoy the moment and smell the, the good air of the mountains, if you <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Any advice? Uh, in I'm having issues uh, bringing my spins around. Any tips? Um, well, my tip is uh, it's all about uh, the vision. So it's probably because you don't try to go and look for your landing with your eyes. And so it's like it goes from the eyes and then the shoulders and then the, the, the lower body will follow. So I think that's kind of a really uh, where it comes from. It's like really try to use your shoulder to get all the momentum and don't forget the eyes. Yeah. Um, okay, let's do one more question. Shit, I lost my questions. Anna, oh, no, you're back. Uh, it is not about steep, but about program. It's a gem, true gem. Sorry. Ta, 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 ta. Can you explain the conditions that lead to avalanche under Atlas where you were first on site? Um, yeah, well, basically, so the way things happen uh, on that, uh, like on the accident of our friend was. Uh, uh, so it's it's basically a run that I do all the time. It's, I think it's my favorite favorite run. It's called Secret. So there is uh, there are two entries to it. So you can go to the right, and it kind of slid the day before. Uh, no, two days before, like on on a previous, like before uh, that storm. And so I think that kind of probably gave a bit of a a, a good uh, like a green light to be like, okay, it has slid on that side. So in a way, it must have cleaned quite a bit. But the other entry has a bit of an exposed uh, access, and it's a usually, uh, you know, it's it's usually a small part where you could see that there is potentially a slab. It's like really easy to to spot, and usually go through it with speed. And what happened that day with this accident is that not only that pocket slid, but it slid all around it, all the way to the top of the run, and all the way till the next ridge. To the top of the ridge and to the top of the ridge where you normally start from so which means that uh whenever the accident happened um uh like i'm not gonna mention him because i don't want any controversy but yeah he he basically uh found no one saw him exactly but uh like it's a run i do all the time you go from the rocks and he probably didn't have uh, enough speed to go through because it didn't just break in the middle of the core it broke all the way around and that's something that's really surprising that that i would never have expected because it's it's like the top of the run has been ready ridden quite a lot it's like an area that that is on a ridge which is quite wind uh like hammered like so quite scraped you know there's not so much accumulation of snow usually up there and it's also like west facing so it gets quite a bit of sun so you know all these aspects usually make it like pretty easy to to gauge, and the way it went is just uh, like what, one of those things which kind of change your your understanding, like which makes you feel like oh shit, like uh, this is what I thought possible. This is uh, this is something else. So it changes your the standards in your head. So yeah, this um, yeah super super unfortunate, and uh, and on top of that there was people riding on the on the couloir 
below, which normally would not necessarily be a problem because you would never think it would go that big. And, and like, if anything would go, normally it would be like it would be tiny and not really super significant for people below. But that was a, a terrible uh, scenario. Yeah. So yeah. On that note, uh, thank you so much for being there and for attending and and for yeah giving your questions. It's it's actually a great pleasure for me to answer and, and to uh, yeah like to share this with you. I think uh, for me, like you know, we spoke at the beginning of the the. Um, like the, the the like the whole q a session that yeah i think i feel i have a responsibility because uh, we just make everyone dream of like crazy steep powder run all the time since many many years and uh yeah i think it's important to to give the tools to go and enjoy and especially enjoy it safely so so yeah i hope uh yeah i'm gonna carry on on doing those because uh i think this is super important to me and please come back to me whenever you have questions like and you can ask me comments on the like whenever like on the how to xv on, on the comments i i really i don't answer straight away but i always answer so uh thank you so much for for your support and um be safe out there and i hope you're not getting too stranded with that covid and that you get to enjoy and uh, whenever you're gonna have time uh, to enjoy remember <laughs> take it easy and try to appreciate step by step and and voila yeah thank you guys so much and a la prochaine